and dear ladies, my name is Jack Tiptegar and welcome back to actually what could be the last episode of What Remains of Edith Finch. I didn't know we were so close to but the end, back but... On it now. Looking back on it now. The moon? I didn't realize we were so close to the end, but people in the comments were telling me. Looking back on what? If she told me there was going to be so much climbing, Ooh. I never would have come when I was 22 weeks pregnant. Dude, you're pregnant? Whoa! Yeah, you really should not be climbing across trees. I guess I should have... Well, I don't know. That could look like you're pregnant. Could look like you're wearing a big jumper. Could just look like your belly. I don't know. I didn't know she was pregnant. Ah, oh, fuck. Yeah, America, dude. I never met Grandpa Sam, but I think he and my mom had a lot in common. I guess I could see a little prego ego in the bellow. Huh. They oh. were pretty intense. That's both really cool, but also haunting at the same time. Oh, there's a softbox light over here. Someone's recording some fucking dank YouTube Let's Plays. Grandpa Sam. That's one cool 80s looking motherfucker. Ah, oh, that's a cool transition. I promise. You'll never forget this weekend. Yes, sir. These memories are gonna last a lifetime. Mm-hmm. Click! Perfect. Am I gonna have to shoot anything? It's gonna rain the whole weekend, isn't Those it? transitions are awesome. You're in cars. I will never forget this weekend, Dad. That's the spirit. Okay, got it. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna take some pictures, okay? Just be careful. The camera's older than you are. Right. Oh. Hmm. Definitely should not have drunk all that coffee. <laughs> hey! <laughs> oh, she was taking <laughs> the picture this time. <laughs> I'm just saying, you piss. I'm not always gonna be here, Don. You'll need to remember this stuff if you want to survive. I'll be fine, Dad. You know who else thought he was gonna be fine? Some guy who died. Don, I'm being serious. I know, Dad. You're always serious. Doesn't being out here make you want to chill out? Well, to tell you the truth, I haven't been out here in 20 years. Don, don't you think you could find something more interesting to photograph? Cops. Oh, God. Jeez, this scared me. Last time I was with my brother Calvin. Man, that was a great trip. I wonder if I can see Bigfoot somewhere. Your grandpa's fan taught us how to fish. How to build a fire. It's hard focus. And we found an old logging trail. There were deer everywhere. Big feet! I bet if I could remember where that trail was, we'd spot a buck for you in no time. Sure. Give me a minute to check the map. There's a canoe over there. Mess with the canoe, please. Oh, there's a lot of stuff here. I'm gonna just take pictures of everything. Bird on socks. Eyes, Don. Thanks, Dad. Appreciate you. Oh, good. Is there something specific I'm supposed to be taking pictures of? Or am I just taking pictures of everything? Red bean soup. My favorite when I'm out camping. I'm just taking pictures of everything. I'm gonna take another picture of you. I feel like I'm supposed to take a picture of something, because it's not progressing. Can I see something spooky in the distance and freak myself out? That'd be really cool. I really like that. Oh, there's a shovel right there. Some binoculars. 
fishing rods. Propane. Maybe I should take more pictures of the bird. <gasps> There's a deer up there! That's the one! That's the thing! Take the shot. Let me get a picture of it. Dad, I... Let me get behind you. Aww. Do I have to do this? Don, you don't have to do anything. But if you want to survive, you need to be strong. Now keep yourself squared up. Elbows down, like we practiced, whenever you're ready. It's not gonna stay there forever, Don. Great shot, Don. Oh, I took a picture right as it happened. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> I'm proud of you, Don. <laughs> Always remember that, okay? Oh, I can actually move. Oh, that's fucked up. Oh, it's a timer! Oh, okay. <laughs> that's clever. Dad, it's twitching. I think that's it's totally so normal, Don. Just focus on the camera. Try not to think about Dad! it. Dad! Oh, fuck! Of all these stories, that's the one I wish most that my mom had told me. Dude! Poor Sam! He got booked Sam by a book! his life shooting photos, but mom said he got nervous being in front of the camera. I guess we're all afraid of something. Spent all his life shooting photos and shooting deers. Or deer, I guess. Deers. Deer is plural of deer. It's quite the collection you got there. S. Finch, that's a nice looking gun though. I've been hunting before. Um, but just shooting like game birds. But I never really got into it. The, my, my morality kind of kicked in. Death, Sam seemed to go out of his way to meet it. So I'd always feel bad for stuff being shot. Airline ticket. K. Finch. Where did you head to, K? Oh, it's a cat getting ready to attack a squirrel. The fuck? Chris's bird hunt. Okay. What else do I do in here? There was nothing to interact with. Or did I miss something? I don't know. This place looks fairly undisturbed though. Which is kind of weird. Okay, now be careful. Walk on the walk on the metal or the the wooden joists. Don't fucking walk on the fiberglass. We we'll go through the freaking floor. After Sam died, my mom and Edie got really close. This is cozy. They both lost a lot. Oh, this would be so nice to live in a house like this at nighttime. You could come and just sit up here, all nice and fuzzy warm, and look out at the stars. Finch control. <laughs> Don't tell me a baby died in this fucking curse. Wait, nineteen seventy six. It was one year old. No. A lawsuit has been filed against you. You have 20 calendar days. If you're not... Okay. 
K. Carlisle and Sam Finch. Dear K, do you remember the way Gregory used to laugh when he thought he was alone? Like something funny was happening, but only he could see it. Oh, I get to be a baby, play with my toys. The rest of us don't. Bloop, 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 bloop. <laughs> oh. Can we do anything else with it? Hello, Mr. Ducky. Is that Ducky chasing me? Okay. I think these things are alive. <gasps> I'm the frog! I get to control the frog! Yes! I turn it over, Gregory. It's time to... Hold on, sweetie. Hello? Sam, I told you I don't want to talk right now. Whee! I wonder what he saw. Yeah, I can pop the bubbles! What his world was like. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Fuck the magnet letters. You reminded me so much of Cal. imagination. Whatever it was, yes. he saw. <laughs> made him happy. Yeah, dude. Gregory thing! That is actually an achievement. <laughs> Come on, ducks, bounce me higher! <laughs> These dudes follow me. Okay, we're gonna perform an action out over the whale. Woo! Okay, now bounce me higher, friend! I know how safe yes. Oh man, this video is going to get claimed now because of that. <laughs> but I like it. Sorry about that, Gregory. That's fine. I know you did everything you could. Maybe if I hadn't caught that night. Damn it. Oh no. I, don't I wish he could have told us about the world he saw. Oh, God. There's so much I don't understand about Gregory. Did he fucking about drown? Everything. Oh, God, that's horrible. She so said if I hadn't called that night, you would have gotten them out of the bath. I'm sure he's happy. That's so sad. And you want him to be happy too. Good luck, Kay. Love, Sam. I didn't even realize that someone on the list was one years old. That's so sad. I can't imagine my mom ever writing poetry and yet... And yet what? This kid was 13 years old. A poem for Gus who always said the wedding was a bad idea. Our father never hit us kids, at least not very hard, before the day my brother said with teenage disregard that he'd be dead before he'd see a wedding in our yard. Oh, I get rid of the letters. That's so cool! Uh -oh. My father uh -oh. made him come, of course, but Gus stood far apart, just flew his kite and bottled up the storm inside his heart.
tried to talk him out of it, but though he'd never met her. We don't need a stepmom, were the words that I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. Woo! I like flying kites. I haven't flown a kite in years. I like how my kite just stays up as well. It doesn't matter. I've never had a kite that did that. My kites always sucked. Wait, where's the next thing? Okay. Ah. This is clever. When the time for photos came, Dad ordered him to come, come here. here. But Gus declined, and as a sign held up his middle finger. Oh. <laughs> Gus, no. The wind picked up, and panicked geese appeared and quickly went. But all the humans did that day was go inside the tent. I want to see the geese? Uh oh. Whoa! Whoa! The rain came down in buckets then, but no one seemed afraid that nature might destroy the tent our dad had crudely made. Jesus, dude! You just destroy everything! This is like Katamari now! The thunder sounded much too close and full of angry power. But all my father said to this was, Make the music louder. I wish that I could truly say I thought about you on that day. Out there on the beach alone. Just you, the wind, the sea, and foam. But I didn't. Until we found you. I'm beginning to think this curse is real! She never talked about him, but Mom told me once if I was a boy, they were going to name me Gus. So we have like three or four people left. We have Kay and Sanjay who aren't really connected to the tree. They're like, Kay is with Sam and Sanjay is with Dawn. Lewis and Milton. We have to see as well. A lot of them are so young. And I don't know if it's a curse really got to do with the family more so than it is this freaking house or this area. So much shit has gone wrong here. Raise flag, 7.30 a.m. Breakfast, 8 a.m. Quiet time, 11 p.m. I mean, uh, 2300 hours. Yes, sir! Can I walk? Can I rock climb? Fuck yeah. My mom moved up to the loft after her brothers died. Don't forget! Pregnant. At the time, it was as far away as she could get. It's a cool way to get in and out of your bed room. It's not really a room, it's connected to the other room. So that's cool. Religion was another thing my mom never talked about, but I think it helped her a lot after her dad died. Hmm. Dawn and Sanjay, we get to figure out about these she people. She spent now. a summer building houses in Calcutta, where she met my dad, Sanjay. So Dawn is her mother, and her mother was the one in that. So it was her, yeah, her granddad, Sam, in the video, I guess you could say, with the deers. Deer, I keep making that mistake. Religion, science, math, and history. All you need to, uh, seek humanity. I don't know. Ten ways to teach critical thinking. Copy passport for volunteer center, meet with relieve rep, after school teaching pack, and fly to India. Yes, let's go down. Whee! I'm a firefighter now. Yeah, can't go out that way. Oh, I wasn't supposed to go My that way at all. I moved to India a week after graduation and got a job teaching English. Lewis was born a year later. 
So Lewis is your brother. And was Gregory the child that died in the bath? Was that her uncle, I guess? Was it Dawn's brother? I don't know. The family tree is getting really confusing. Because I think Sam is her granddad. Kay was the wife. And I think Kay was the one in with him who had a child, Gregory, in the bath. I think that was Kay that you could see getting Gregory out of the bath. I don't know. My, my timeline's when all my dad confused. Died, I don't think Mom knew where else to go. I'm sure Edie was happy to have her back. Milton, Edith. I see kids in the house again. I'm Edith Finch, right? Or is this... Because I was named after the grandmother? Well, I don't know. When you when you sprout so many names at me in the space of like an hour and a half. Oh, that's pretty. And you you're showing me timelines and everything. It's very had confusing. To get a little bigger, but Edie was used to that. I don't know why it didn't click with me either that I'm constantly going up. But yeah, this is this is so nice. I like little terraces like this with the lights all around. It always reminds me of, like, movies or TV shows or something where you see people out on their terraces with their friends having a good time and, like, on rooftops or something. I don't know. And for a while, things were good. Almost normal. Reading is a hoot. You said it, Mr. Owl. Barbara, Molly, Gus, Fenn, Sam, Calvin, Odin, Gregory. Lewis rules! Can I see my family thing? Yeah. So Odin and then Sam and Kay. Yeah. So yeah, so these all died like a long time ago. Because Edith was born in 1999, the character I play as. So you had Molly, Barbara, Calvin, Sam and Walter all in the same family. And then Gregory, Gus, and Dawn were all brother and sister. So yeah. It's just, whenever you think of somebody saying, like, your uncle, your uncle Gus or your uncle Gregory, you always imagine them as older people. Because that's the norm, but Gus died when they were 13? And you died when you were one. So sad. But it didn't last. The scientific method. Observation, question, research, hypothesis, experiment, data, conclusion. That is definitely the scientific method. So she went to India to build houses and then met Sanjay and fell in love and had a bunch of babies. That's nice. Or maybe they were the children they helped. The beginning of the end was Milton's 10th birthday, when Edie gave him a castle. The beginning of the end? Yeah, as, as cool as this is, I would not like to live in this one. I would not like to live on any of the ones up on top of the house, because this shit gets windy. It got so windy, it killed one of your family members. It's even... This isn't even finished. Music's nice. Whoa! That's awesome! Magic Milton paintbrush. Finch in the magic paintbrush. Wait, how do I? Oh, okay. That's cool. Oh, dude, it just got so meta.
please tell me that that's a portal door and I can see that to the left and please tell me I'm able to walk through that. That's awesome. It's like a Pan's Labyrinth kind of thing. I was oh, you got a cool picture. So Milton is your brother? And Lewis is your brother? Hmm. We still haven't gotten Dawn's one or Edie's one. He's really good at painting. This music is lovely. Mom spent months searching for my brother. Then she sealed the doors. Here's this magic door. I, I really wish they had a transition through that. That would have been awesome. Whatever Milton had found in the house, Mom didn't want it getting out. What? What did he find in the house? He found mold. <laughs> I can go up and around. That's, I like that kind of level design where you go through an area like this and your eyes are automatically drawn to this. So obviously you go and walk to that and go through it and everything. You don't even realize these steps were here this entire time until you come back and see it from a different angle. That's, that's clever level design. Mom blamed Edie, but I think Lewis blamed himself. After he graduated, he just spent more and more time in his room. Until mom got him a job at the cannery. Whoa, trippy man. Lewis's room smelled very, very familiar. That part of him lived on. This is fucking awesome! All you people have such cool rooms! That's not fair! That is fucking shit! I didn't have a room like this when I was younger. Well, granted you have a family curse and you all died it seems, but... This looks like a mix between a Nintendo 64 and a PlayStation. Lewis and I spent a lot of time playing games together, but he was surprisingly bad at them. He died a lot. Just like your family? Oh, I'm sorry everybody. Sorry for that one, but that was right there and I had my, my comedy brain kicked in and I was like, make the joke. Make the joke. Whoa, this place is cool. Ah, oh, you smoking that fucking weed, dude? What happened to Lewis? Why is my family a disaster? Dear Mrs. Finch, as Lewis's psychiatrist, I can understand your desire for an explanation. As I see it, the trouble began in January, shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. Oh, no. Newly sober, I believe Lewis first noticed the monotony of his daily life. He kept working at the cannery, but he withdrew part of himself. In our sessions, I saw the same behavior. His mind began to... ...wander. Oh, that's me! I asked him to describe it. What the...? He said he started small. Imagining a labyrinth. He'd feel his way about. He's a wizard! Then something moved. Bats. And toads. Oh, dragon! And things that have not names. No, it's a dragon. It has a name. He knew it was all in his head. Oh, that's weird. But he took it very seriously. 
I had hoped he'd find himself. This is very clever mechanics. Because it's showing you the monotony you of his life new. by you just using the mouse constantly the as you're going through an amazing scenario. Daydreaming at the cannery. That's fucking cool. I spoke with his boss. But he said Lewis had become a model employee. Methodical, tireless, focused. Like a whole new Lewis. So well, I let yeah. him go on. It's not that fucking hard to just get fish heads chopped. I even encouraged him. It seemed very promising at first. It does really make your brain, like, disconnect from what you're doing. He told me he'd made a new friend. Dude, this could be a game all on its own. On the edge of a city he named Lewis Topia. I like that. The fish in this... He built the city up slowly. Gets destroyed when your, uh, when your fish gets destroyed in your hand. That was clever. Then he made musicians. The hero of the people! He talked about starting a band. And he was always humming something. Every day his imagination grew stronger. Look like potato people! Oh, what's gonna happen to this fish? Oh, nothing. He no okay. longer spoke at the cannery. his chopping was as reliable as ever. Then one day it struck him that all the cheering crowds, even the stones under his feet, were all in his imagination. So he could do whatever he wished. Oh no. I really hope this doesn't end the way I think it's gonna end. He held an election for mayor. And he won. Ah, uh, it's like Mario. <laughs> they begged him to stay, but his mind was already wandering. It became a game for him. Funny how you'd say that, considering I'm playing a, city, a game. Then immediately push on. New Louisville. Ah, uh, it's pronounced New Louisville. Just a small clarification. St. Louis. St. St. Louis. Again. He started drifting away from our reality. I know it's not spelled like Louis, but I prefer it pronounced that way. Ooh, term. Minneapolis. That's a good one. Until that one, one day he allow. forgot to go home from the cannery. Even as his mother pleaded with him, part of Louis kept sailing on. That's sad. In Lewisburg, he heard rumors of a... Beautiful prince. Beautiful prince. Dude, I'm choosing my own adventure. Please let the water go away when I go through it. Yes! It's exactly what I wanted. That's awesome! The prince was on his own quest for... Radiant rainbows! Radiant rainbows. Even though the serpent is really cool. But look at that rainbow, it's so pretty. Oh, I didn't go through one of them. I knocked down a fucking rainbow! He followed the sound of his... Electric sitar! Sitar, however you pronounce it. Electric sitar. Let me hear one! Shit. Here we go. I love the sound of sitars. His chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon. But I'm 
happens if it's just at the fish pile? Logic remains sound. Oh, I can't even see it anymore. The dream has he become my reality. All in his imagination. And they've already accustomed me to the methodical nature of the fish. Which is exactly what it's supposed to symbolize. That's really fucking clever. But he was so proud of having created it. In his own eyes, he'd become something greater than a king. Whoa. I want this game. I want to play this game. For someone who'd never known success in the real world, I think it was overwhelming. And then it struck him that the real Lewis was not the one chopping salmon, but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. Oh, yeah. This is what I feared. My imagination is as real as my body, he told me. Hard to argue with him. Don't do anything stupid, Lewis. He began to forget the world we know. I think it pained him to remember Lewis, the cannery worker. Oh, my shadow is even me as the king. He began to despise the man with a royal contempt. That's real me. I still thought I could save him. Even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder. Palace would be packed with his companions. They're all faceless, though. Is he going to end up killing himself? Is that what I think is going to happen? I like the swagger you got going on, though. Insisted on inviting. This is super pretty, Molly. It's like a scene from Aladdin. Yes, yes, I am real prince, not fake. Mrs. Finch, your son was a kind man who will be missed by all of us who knew him. That's sad. My brother was really cool. I wish you could have met him. So did he stick his head under one of the things at the cannery? Wait, wasn't there a way out up here to do something? Ah, oh, there's nothing up there. The stairs are broken. Man, this family does not have it nice, do they? Well, his was a bit more complex I'm than some of the other ones. His funeral. My mom told me to start packing. She waited until the day before we left to tell Edie. I'm not sure if she wanted to make it easier or harder. I 
I wish we'd stayed. But I understand why we left. Man, how do you get plumbing all the way up here? My mom ended up leaving everything behind. To teach and to learn, Dawn Finch. She wrote a book! What happened that night had been coming for a long time. Maybe I should have come sooner. Oh, this is my room! I hope it's pretty! But it had to end one way or another. All that's left now is to tell you about that last night. Oh, we're gonna get the secrets. Hey, it's the people from Lewis's thing. There's the house. Okay, what went down? day, Edie just watched us pack and didn't say a word. Until supper when she raised her glass and said, To our final night together, and all our final nights apart. Grandma, you know what I said about alcohol. Some of your medications are very Edith, specific- I left a present for you in the hallway. Why don't you go open it? The grown-ups have to argue now. I'm sorry, you're right. We're all leaving tomorrow. Let's just enjoy our last- I'm not leaving. Edith, you're excused. She was right. The grown-ups have to argue now. The Where power had been shut off that morning, but Edie always had plenty of candles. When my mom sailed the library, I don't think she knew about the other entrance. Or that Edie had a key to it. We get to go into the library for the first time. The thing you're afraid of isn't going to end when you leave the house. Edith has a right to know these stories. My children are dead because of your stories. I think it's best if Edith and I leave tonight. We'll have the nursing home send a van for you in the morning. Aww. Okay? Dear Edith, there's so many stories I wish I could tell you, but there's only time for one. This is about what happened on the night you were born. That night, the tide went way, way out. It was the first and last time I ever saw the old house aground. There'd been an earthquake out in the middle of the ocean. They called it the lowest tide in a thousand years. God, it smelled awful. Yeah, I can imagine. No, I've seen that house every day of my life. Can you imagine? Like, the reason there's S-traps in your toilets and in your sinks and everything is because the shit that goes down through them absolutely stinks. So you need, like, a layer of water there to stop the smell coming back up the pipes. So can you imagine what the fucking ocean would smell like when all the water's gone out of it? It would be horrible. But I never thought I'd go back to it. So this is the old house out in the water. When the fog rolled in. I lost my way. Shit. No, I can still see. No, can't see anymore. I got turned around. What the? I was just walking straight. You can't do this to me, game. For a while, I wandered. 
That'd be scary I if there was an earthquake. Seeing things. Oh. If there was an earthquake out at sea and it sucked all the water out from where you normally see it, that'd be terrifying. Doesn't that mean the water's all gonna come rushing back? Like tsunami fashion? I'll just I'll zoom to make it seem like I'm running faster. Ever existed. But when I saw them, they felt like old friends. That night, a lot of things came back to me. Or maybe I came back to them. I like how there's just a buoy sitting in the house. Things I can't explain, but that I need you to try and- Edith, what are you doing in here? It's mine. Edith! Mom, you're gonna rip it! Let go! I kicked and screamed, but... Mom dragged me to the car. I never saw Great Grandma Edie again. No. The next morning, the band came to pick her up, but she was already gone. After what do you that, mean gone? moved around a lot. We both tried to make the best of it. A few years went by. Ah, oh, that's fucking cool. The whole dandelion is letters. My mom didn't like to talk about it. But she started getting sick a lot. <coughs> oh no. The rest happened pretty quickly. She got better for a while, and then she didn't. And then I was alone. The last finch left alive. We were pregnant. Until I found out about you. I'm still not sure what to tell you about all this. Oh, you're telling the story to your unborn child. If we lived forever, maybe we'd have time to understand things. But as it is, I think the best we can do is try to open our eyes. And appreciate how strange and brief all of this is. You're being born! This journal was supposed to be for you. We're coming out! But now I hope you'll never see it. I just want to meet you. And tell you all these stories myself. But I guess if you're reading this now... Things didn't work out that way. Oh no... This is where your story begins. I'm sorry I won't be there to see it. It's a lot to ask, but I don't want you to be sad that I'm gone. I want you to be amazed that any of us ever had a chance to be here at all. Good luck. So, all this time you were reading a journal, reliving a lot of the stuff that was going on. 
So did she die from the curse as well? Is there, is there actually a curse on the family? Oh no. Gregory. I'm wondering now, because these seem to be all childhood pictures of the people who were involved in the game. I'm wondering how much of real life permeated this. How many of the stories kind of came from real life scenarios. So, I don't know what the takeaway is supposed to be. Well, obviously the takeaway is that to appreciate what you have while you have it because all of this is so brief. So... Live your life to the best of your abilities while you have it. Which I couldn't agree more with. So many people just coast along. So many people just coast along. And... That, that was clever. He was the <laughs> he was the unlockables programmer and when you actually watch the credits an achievement popped up saying thanks Johan um, Yeah, so many people just coast along and They wait for things to happen. They wait for like you go to your job You you go to school you wait for the good things to happen because you think they're gonna happen later in your life instead of just Appreciating what you have while you have it. Good game. Very good game. I really like that a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I did. It was fucking awesome. <laughs> so now we have the full family tree. Well, Kay and Sanjay aren't here because they're um, marital relations more so than the same with Ingeborg down here with Odin. And Sven was with Edie. Then you had- wait, why is- oh yeah. Oh yeah, it was great grandma Edie, it wasn't just grandma. So you had Walter, Sam, Calvin, Barbara, Molly, who were all your grandparents. I guess? Sam was your granddad. I know, it's confusing, family trees confuse me. Um, and then we had Don, Gus, Gregory. Oh no, these are all brothers and sisters, so these were your- your granduncles and grand aunts. Um, Don, Gus, and Gregory, then Don and Sanjay, then, I guess, were your mom and dad. Oh. And Gus and Gregory, then, were your uncles. And Edith, Milton, and Lewis. Milton got the coolest picture. Um, but yeah, really fascinating game. I had no idea what to expect of it, and it's a bit weird when you play these walking simulators, because there's not usually that much gameplay, but the transitions in this game were outstanding. Going from, like, the camera, and then you had the comic book section that you got to play around, playing in the bathtub and everything. Like, a lot of them were bittersweet. That one with Lewis, I think, was the best one. Because... That- that scenario was a lot more complex than some of the others. Gus was just out in the wind, and some, he got hit by something, it seems, and he died. Gregory was too young, filled up the bathtub again, and drowned in the bath. Super sad. But a lot of these were things that just kind of happened by chance, or by accident and everything. Lewis's one was a very complex scenario. We don't know what happened to Milton. He just seemed to go missing. I don't know. A lot of them are very curious because you didn't- there was a bit of an ambiguous answer as to what actually happened. Lewis, though, that one kind of struck with me because not only was what happened to him a very complex scenario, got to do with mental health issues that were instigated by substance abuse, it seems. Or maybe he had substance abuse because of mental issues. I don't know. But the stuff that was going on with him because you were doing the monotony, it showed you the monotony of taking the fish, putting it in the thing, and putting it forward. And you were doing that with your mouse, with your right hand. But you were daydreaming with your left hand. So to have that confliction going on at the same time, and it really felt like the monotony of the fish, because you were concentrating on guiding him through the labyrinth. So it actually... I've never seen... Like, this is the beauty of video games as a medium. It actually... Like, put that into... Practicality 
the monotony of the fish, of getting the fish, putting it in the thing, putting it forward. You actually played that out. All the while, you were actually daydreaming at the same time. Nothing else, no other medium could do that but a video game. And that's why I love video games. Very few games have been able to... What's the, what's the word I'm looking for? Translate that to reality. A lot of games just have, oh, shooty bang bang in the face and dead and all that kind of stuff. But games that actually take the medium and do something cool with it, I really appreciate. Because it wasn't just a walking simulator then, it was actually showing you what it's like to be in that state of mind. And then his, his, his imagination became his reality. And then he took his own life. What it, well, it seems like that, the guillotine, the fish, the cannery, it all seems fairly obvious, so... Outstanding! And the level design was really damn cool. The house was really damn cool, the environments were awesome, the story was really, really involving. I didn't expect to get as involved into it as I did, because when I started it off, everything seemed very disjointed. And listening to all the people's stories, it seemed like it wasn't going anywhere, and then it came back to a point. I still don't fully understand what was going on, it seemed like the family had a curse that killed them all. Some much, much younger than others. So a lot of it was left ambiguous as well. It said... The next morning, Edie was gone. It didn't say she was dead, but it kind of... Insinuates that she was dead, or she died. But she could have just been gone. With me, it doesn't even have a year, I guess. I don't know. So you were reading a journal basically this entire time for your son who had been born. Was it a son? I think so. Awesome. Really, really cool. I like that. That's gonna make me- that's gonna have me thinking for a very long time. If any of you have any theories or if you've read up on it, because I'm late to this game by now. So if you have any theories or anything as to what actually went on in the game, Please let me know in the comments because I, I want to know more about the story and maybe there's some things that people picked up on a second time through that I kind of missed. If I played it a second time, I'd pick up on way more, I think. Because now you know the premise, you know the setup, you know the people. You know the scenarios of what happened to them. Man, really glad I played this. And the takeaway of it all, as it said at the end, is to go out there, enjoy yourself, make the most of what you have because None of us know how long we have on this plane of existence. None of us know what lies beyond this, this state of being. None of us, a lot of us wish for things that are beyond this. A lot of us are waiting for that, but we don't know. And because we don't know, I say that that makes trying worth it right now. You can wait all you want for great things to happen, but why not try to make them happen right now? Because none of us know what's going to happen tomorrow. So try your best right now in what you have in this situation that you're in at this moment in time. You don't have to do amazing things, but as long as you're trying your best to make the most of it, then... <laughs> that's a success in my mind. So... Just don't take anything for granted. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching this series. If you liked it, punch that like button in the face! Like a boss! And I think he's all real. Whoosh! Whoosh! Thank you guys, and I will see all you dudes! <laughs> what a powerful message. And I came at a perfect time because my brother's literally on his way here right now, so I think that's a great way to set up my day with him.